welcome to a brand new studio vlog. I hope you guys are doing well. Comment down below what piece you've been working on this week, what kind of art that you're making. I would love to know, but in this studio vlog, we are going to be kind of like setting the stage for my shop launch, which will happen in a couple of weeks, I think, probably like mid-May. And I have tons of stuff to do, okay? This is gonna be like a little mini series of vlogs before the launch date, okay? I have been researching P.O. boxes and sales tax, international shipping, and trying to get all of that stuff figured out while the elevators in my building are still having problems. The elevators in my building have been out for the past five or so months off and on. I have been talking with renter advocacy organizations in the city. I've been writing to government officials. I've been organizing with other tenants and looking at moving out, but I'm not sure when that's going to happen. And anyway, it's um it's a whole thing but i am persevering through it and preparing for my shop launch despite it all and we are designing stickers and making a lot of original paintings ever since the 100 heads challenge i have been so inspired to paint again something about forcing myself to do something so unpleasant for me has really made painting so much more joyful and pleasant and i am so glad to be back at it and I knocked out this painting super quickly in one session. I was really proud of it. It kind of embodies the looseness that I really wanted my work to have for a long time. I keep feeling like my paintings are too tight and time constraining like this really helps me like sort of force myself to loosen up and just really condense the information. I loved this process, it was amazing. But I have some packages that we need to open that are also related to the shop launch. So let's go ahead and open those. Oh, all right, got some packages. Actually, wait, hang on. I've got a lot of packages. So let's open some of them, shall we? A lot of this is gonna be stuff for my shop launch. So I got like a label printer, labels, all that good stuff. This is the label printer. So I got this used. This is the label printer that I ordered. I got a used one. So this is the printer itself. It's pretty small, like not very chunky or anything, like just a little bit longer than my hand. And it's a thermal printer, so I don't have to worry anything about like ink at all, because it just like prints onto thermal labels. So it should be a little more environmentally friendly than like other options out there. And this is the part that connects to the computer. Say hi. Say hi to the people. Yes, hello. He says good morning. He says good morning. It is Thursday. Uh, I don't know what day, day it actually is, but it's Thursday. Um, I feel like this vlog so far has just been me opening my mail. So, uh, sorry about that, but I've been trying to get like really high quality prints of my work and it's been more difficult than I anticipated actually. So here's the realization that I made a little while ago. I think I'm just like setting my expectations too high for my first shop launch. I think like I should just, I don't want to say settle. I think my expectations are so high that they're basically unrealistic. Sorry, I'm trying to finagle the cat in my lap so you can see him, but I don't think that's gonna happen. But anyway, um, I think I have expectations for my work right now that are a little bit too high for both like, like the level that I'm at right now in terms of being able to take really high quality photos of my work, like the resources that I have available to me and my budget, frankly, um, for how much I wanna pay for my prints. Oh, okay, he's gone. But so, Let's, let's take a look at the prints, okay, let's, let's take a look at them. So this is the original. As you can see, we've got, you know, a lot of texture, a lot of, you know, very crisp edges that I would like to be reflected in the print, ideally, you know what I mean? To like get a, to get a really high quality reproduction. This is one of the prints that I got from Cat Print. This, I think, side by side, like, the colors are pretty spot on, okay? Pretty spot on. There's a slight dip in like the dynamic range, I think. Like this one obviously has 
a lot more variation in its lightest light since Dark is Darks, where this one is a little bit flatter. But overall, like, like the two of these, they're pretty close. And the edges of the print, they're not quite as crisp, but I think that's fine. I was looking at the prints that I have on the wall behind me, and I was noticing, like, oh, like, these aren't perfect reproductions of the original paintings probably either. Their edges are a little bit fuzzy sometimes, and I think for like a very affordable print, this is a really good option, and I should just go with this. So I ended up ordering I think like 25 or so of these, and I put in another order for um, a couple of other prints. Like I also want to get prints done of the Willard Metcalf study that I did a while ago. I love this painting. I think this painting is gorgeous. I got an 8x8 set of prints for this and then also a 5x7 just like cropped of sort of like this side of the house, which I think will end up looking really nice. There. Voice over Kelsey back again. I just wanted to let you guys know that the reference photos that I used for this painting that you're seeing me work on right now and that like Tuscan landscape that I worked on in the beginning, the reference photos for that I got from Graphics Studios, G R A F I X. On their Gumroad, they have a bunch of really awesome reference packs that I've been loving. I spent like, I don't know, like 40 bucks to get like a bunch of them. And I've really liked like sort of combing through and having all of these really nice, like professional grade reference photos that I'm free to use in any commercial projects like available for me. That has been honestly really great. This is from their Northern Landscapes series, if I'm not mistaken. It's like very like Scandinavia kind of, um, maybe like a little bit of Iceland or something thrown in there, but it is a very pretty mountain landscape, lots of atmospheric lighting. If you're looking to study sort of like how lighting affects landscapes and mountains sort of from a distance with that blue shift that happens with lighting, I really recommend this set specifically. And yeah, I thought I would just like mention them briefly. It's not sponsored by them, but I really enjoy this as a resource, so I recommend it wholeheartedly to any of you guys, and I will leave a link to it in the description as well if any of you guys are interested. It won't be an affiliate link or anything, it's just like, it's just a resource, it's just a resource, okay? Um, anyway, I really enjoyed this process. This painting is not finished at the time I'm recording this voiceover, but it is just like a really nice, refreshing study, and I'm just continually reminded by how much I love oil painting. Like something about like just the buttery softness and the versatility of the medium, especially when you're starting out and you have like this luminous effect that the white ground of the panel imparts onto the, the first layers of the painting. It's just chef's kiss perfection. Your colors will never be purer or brighter than they are in these first few stages, which is why I tend to sort of start a painting and then like it and continue or hate it and then just drop it because for me like it's just that's just where a painting is made and I can't really salvage it beyond that point in my experience with my current skill set and as I talked about earlier sort of loosening up like this by painting things just like faster really does help me I think just kind of like not add in too much detail. That is always where I go wrong in my paintings. I feel like I feel like I always just over render and I really shouldn't. But yeah, I'm gonna leave you guys to the music and we will talk in a little bit. I'll see you then.
Hi there, it's Friday. Um, a lot has been going on. So I talked about the prints earlier. I, I have ordered those, so those should be coming soon. And we've also been working on some paintings. And I know that I probably should make more like merch stuff. You know what I mean? Like more, like more sticker designs, maybe like a washi tape thing. I think that could be really fun to make, but also I really just want to mess around with like some paint today. Like that's really what I want to do. I don't want to do anything else. This thing, this package that I got in the mail, my bestie Al sent this to me, aka Little Star Nerd. If you guys have not been listening to our podcast, what are you doing with your lives? I really recommend that you listen to our podcast. So um, I really loved Al's study of that sergeant painting. And I was like, bestie, are you make prints of this? Because I would totally buy a print. They were like, do you want a print? I'll send you a print. And I was like, yes, yes, I want a print. Thank you. Look at this wrapping, oh, you guys. It's so cute. It has like this little, this little gold washi tape on it. I love this. Thank you so much, Al. You guys aren't already following Little Star Nerd. You totally should be. Wait. They didn't just send me the print. This is a whole bag of goodies in here. Check out. It's like it's like a whole. It's like a huge package. Like a little care package. I am in love. Oh my god. This looks so good. This is the print. Doesn't this look just absolutely incredible? This is the print. I am over the moon. This looks amazing. So many other little goodies in here. There's a little letter. This is so gorgeous. Wow. Here are the little stickers. So lovely. Here's another gorgeous print. This one as well. And then we have this little letter. 
it's in such a pretty envelope too like it's like handmade like really high quality paper i don't want to I don't want to like tear it more than I have to. Look at the paper. Bestie, did you draw this pattern on here? Kelsey, here's the print. I'm honored that you liked the piece and wanted to print the seal of approval. Anyways, I loved working with you and I'm very excited to grind. Love, Al. Thank you so much. This is the cutest little package. And speaking of prints and shop updates, and trying to get like all of the stuff together for that, I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about the sponsor of this week's video, Koji. So Koji is of course the world's best link and bio service, but they're also so much more than that. Not only can you link to everything on the internet, all of your socials, gather emails for your newsletter, whatever. You can also sell physical and digital products directly on your Koji profile. And they have hundreds of mini apps on their mini app storefront for you to browse and get started with. But the mini app that I want to tell you guys a little bit about today is called the Fund My Project app. This makes crowdfunding really simple. So I'm lucky enough to have the resources and the capital right now to be able to get started with launching my online shop. But if you're a total beginner and you do have an audience, you could crowdfund your online shop. If you don't have the money to start that right now, or if you want your audience to get in on the ground level, you could crowdfund that project of launching your online shop or even starting a new project like a YouTube channel or starting a web comic. I mean, like whatever your heart desires, whatever passion project you've desperately been looking to pursue, you could have crowdfunding directly built in to your Koji profile where everyone goes and they click on the link in your bio and instantly collect funds from your followers to get started. This mini app lets you set a target goal, offer donor rewards, and collect shipping info to mail those rewards when your project is fully funded. Koji is a really incredibly powerful tool that I really hope you guys take full advantage of. As I've talked about before, I'm new when it comes to getting sponsorships on this channel, and I really, really only want to work with brands that I know that you guys will derive value from and that matter to you. And I think Koji is honestly really one of those brands. And with that, let's get back to our regularly scheduled content. So these frog sketches, all right, let's, let's talk about it. I've been meaning to create more merch, more stickers, more keychains, like washi tape. I want my online shop to have more than just originals and prints. I want to kind of branch out a little bit and force myself to like stretch my creative muscles a little bit and just practice designing new products. So I've kind of been obsessed with the idea of frog stickers recently. Uh, like I designed a mushroom sticker. I think I showed that to you guys in this vlog. If not, I will put up a picture or some b-roll footage of it here. But I really want to branch out a little bit more and try painting like animals and figures and like, you know, that kind of stuff. So I figured that frogs would be a really good way to kind of ease into that. Frogs are like very kind of organic looking creatures. You can probably like sort of mangle the anatomy of a frog and still get it like mostly correct. So I thought I would do that. I also had the opportunity to join Skillshare's Teach Lab residency program. I actually had the call for that today, which is the footage that you're seeing right now. So while I was on that Zoom call, I had my camera turned off and I was finishing up the design of this sticker. So I ended up going with a kind of like an oval design where the frog is kind of like leaving the frame of that oval. And our little man is surrounded by some greenery and some really cute little flowers. And I'm finishing up his design over here. I ended up designing this entirely in Procreate. And then I pushed it over into Photoshop for like the finishing touches before I got, you know, everything manufactured and like uploaded it to the website and everything. So I had the reference photo side by side the entire time. I didn't really know what entirely I was gonna do for the scales, but I ended up going with like these organic looking shapes that I put all across his little body and then using some like special effect layers, I changed the colors throughout and I was able to kind of like color shift everything in a really cute way. So that really helped at like sort of expanding the depth of this piece and making it a little more dynamic, a little more interesting. And I think that 
definitely put this little sketch over the top. It took a couple of hours to fully design this piece. I actually ended up kind of waffling between Procreate and traditional art. I ended up like kind of starting a gouache painting before abandoning it and just doing this. But this, but the sticker design is done. I will put a picture of it up right now. And I am so, so happy with the way that it turned out. I just like have really been getting into Procreate recently and it's really fun to be able to kind of like undo anything and shift the colors in any direction that I want to even if it doesn't quite replicate the like innate satisfaction that I get from working traditionally so anyway that is the end of this vlog basically um it's a little bit shorter than most of my vlogs I hope that's okay but I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one bye